the pastor, even though he uh, may not yeah. be able to carry a note or play yep. a, a play a note on an instrument, it, it needs to be clear that he is leading the worship because pastors yes. are ultimately responsible for the worship. Yes. You don't delegate yeah, that yes. to a musician. We've said that before yep. as well. Welcome to Soundless Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music, where we explore what the Bible has to say about music and worship in the church and encourage those who plan, lead, and participate in their Sunday gatherings each week. Hello, welcome to the Soundless Doctrine podcast. My name is David Zimmer. My name is Bob Coughlin. And we are rejoined yes. by Jeff Perswell, a very special guest. He is a great friend, dear friend of 26 years, I guess. I don't know. I think I that's right. I don't want to push it. Um, dean of the Sovereign Grace Pastors College. I was and like... Pastor of Sovereign Grace Church Louisville. College, I think. <laughs> when <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff always thinks of himself as a younger man, but but what do you say? I'm younger always, than you. I'm, I was the age of your older brother. <laughs> Is that and, it? and there's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was almost like two generations. Between. So good. All and right. Me. Uh, Jeff, sometimes we, well, a lot, a lot of times actually, we get uh, emails from people mm, who good. listen to the podcast. And some of them are very encouraging. Some, a lot of them just asking questions. And we encourage people, if you want to ask a question, just email soundplusdoctrine, spelled out, at sovereigngrace.com. And you can ask us anything. And we try to get to a number of these. Plus, on the plus sign or the word plus? No, the word plus, spelled okay. out. P-L-U-S. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, no, we would love spaces. getting questions. No spaces. No spaces. Okay. <laughs> it's hard well, to have a URL to with to you. spaces. Not these questions. They know. They know they, how to reach oh, us. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> They're a younger generation. <laughs> well, I want to know how to get hold of you, too. I'm sure you do. Um, this is a topic that we've been wanting to do for a while. Mm. Um, and here's the question. Okay. Could you talk more in depth about what women's roles are in leading worship? I am a member of small a member of a small rural country church, and we have two options for musicians. I play guitar and sing, and another older lady plays piano. Neither myself, and this is a woman writing, nor the lady who plays piano are anywhere near professional musicians, so we are limited in our abilities, but strive to be better and learn more. Mm. Amen. Thank you for doing that. That said, we are both women, and though we believe that the word speaks against women teaching men, I'm wondering how this fits into leading music. Mm. If we lead, are we going against scripture? And if so, what would you recommend our church does with no men able to musically lead? Now, I want to share with our listeners and viewers that we had actually started this podcast, <laughs> and we were about five minutes we in did, it, yeah. and we thought... You know what, Jeff? You mean should, on this topic? Yeah, yeah on this topic. And we said, let's have Jeff here for this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it, it's it's a nuanced topic. We're, I think we're fighting mm. against uh, certainly a cultural trend, uh, you know, outside the church, certainly, uh, that's seeking to abolish all distinctions between men and women. But then even in the church, there is uh, a leaning towards um yeah is it really that different and then you then you get down to this area of leading music where uh, i think churches that agree with this woman that uh you know the word s says that women shouldn't teach men th there's different ways of applying that so jeff i th i thought it'd be great we thought it'd be great to have you on the podcast just to talk through some of those issues and not so much to lay down a this is what you must do. Mm. Um, we can share our practice, the way we think about it, but more how to think through it, because this is a legitimate question. So this woman would come from a church that would be complementarian. And for our listeners, probably a lot of them would know what that means, but you're on the council, uh, uh, on the board of the Council of mm -hmm. Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, which is a great organization. Um, so just to start off, how would you describe like a complementarian understanding mm -hmm. uh, of, of scripture and, and where would you place it in priorities and in terms of what God's, how God's word speaks to us? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could take the whole podcast on that, but well, just you could. briefly, we want to go briefly. briefly. Yes. Yeah. Well, complementarian uh, was a term that was coined back in the seventies, I think by John Piper and Wayne Grudem to describe uh what they, what we would see as a, a biblical vision of manhood and womanhood. In other words, the, the reality that 
male and female, man and woman, are made both both equally created in the image of God, mm. both equally of, of equal value before God, equally important in God's purposes, um, equally recipients of God's salvation, equally important to God's purposes, mm. et cetera, et, et cetera. Complete equality in those ways, yet they are complementarily ordered. In other words, men and women have different uh, different roles to play uh, in God's purposes, in particular in the family and in the home. So, in the family and the church. I'm sorry, in the yeah. family and in the church. Yeah. Sorry. What's the difference between the family <laughs> yeah, and the home? The family and the home. I didn't yeah. know there was a difference. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. And so, uh, and, and so, therefore, there are certain roles in the family and in the church that uh, men are called to. Uh, there are certain roles that women in the church and in the home are called to. Um, and so that's that's essentially what hmm. complementarian is, whereas the, the other view, just to kind of contrast it with uh, what would typically be called an egalitarian view, which would essentially see that men and women are not only equal in value and worth, but also they can function equally. They can hmm. function in the same hmm. ways. They can hmm. function in the same roles in in the home and in, and in the church. Uh, sort of their core verse would be, you know, Galatians three twenty eight. You know, in Christ there is neither male nor female. And so, uh, whereas uh, a complementarian would say, well, absolutely. And what that what that text is talking about is in terms of our uh, worth before God and mm. and the availability of salvation. Mm. So, in the economy of salvation, yes, there is no male or female. God's salvation is for all. Um, who he draws to himself, but yet that that doesn't erase the differences in male mm. and female, mm. differences uh, constitutionally, but as well as differences in God's God's purposes, mm -hmm. and that there in the complementarian view, I'd want to be quick to say it's it's not about restriction, it's not about what Good. men and women can do, it's a vision of life, yes. a vision of complementarity, uh, a, a vision w that. Uh, promises flourishing for both men and women mm. when they appreciate each other and they appreciate the way God's made them and they appreciate yes. the great callings that God has called each of them respectively to. So you're not talking yeah. about men in the church or the home domineering over their wives or, or the women in the church and saying, no, you can't do this. No. It's more, no, let's figure out how God has called us to work together to, to display the glory of Christ by the power of his spirit. Exactly. Because he's yeah. designed us in a complementary Th way. That's a distortion of male, yes. what you know we refer to as male headship. Men created to to lead both in the family and, and in the church. Uh, but that male but that headship is patterned on the headship of Christ, which is right. anything but a dominating headship. It's a uh, it's a leadership headship to be sure. But it's a loving headship. It's a self-sacrificing headship. Yes, uh, yes. It's a serving headship for yes. the good of those that he's serving. Mm -hmm. um, a, another distortion of that would be the man who doesn't lead at all. Yes, uh, yes. And uh, that would be a distortion as well, because men are called to carry that burden of leadership, which is a, which is a, a burden, uh, mm -hmm. uh, one that God gives us grace to carry. But yes. uh, we 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 are called to take initiative. We're called to protect. We're called we're called to lead. And a lot of times, our own sinful laziness uh, can war against that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, and Bob, wouldn't you say um, a question like this uh, can also lead to sort of like an ambiguity of what is the song leader's role? Well, absolutely. And that's, that's, I think that's part of the, why it's such a question, why this woman's writing this question. It's like, okay, 1 Timothy 2, um, 11, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit, permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Mm -hmm. Does that, and I think here's a question, does that mean that a woman can't lead the music? And Because we have examples, all different kinds of examples. You know, you have the, the, you know, the 60, 70-year-old lady playing the organ, playing the piano. Mm -hmm. um, would you say she's leading the music? Well, Kind of, she's just really accompanying the congregation, just playing the hymns, you know, versus 
you know, uh, a woman who's in front with the with guitar, piano, whatever, uh, shouting out things, reading the scripture, directing the congregation. You know, those those are two different models for what leading the music means. And mm-hmm. obviously, I th- and Jeff, I want your thoughts on this. When it says... Um, In two different functions, I would say. Okay, d- fill that out. Mm. Yeah. Well, they're, they're functioning in different ways. Um, can I maybe take a step back? Absolutely. To, yeah. to sort of answer that, that question, you mm-hmm. know, which I, I think at the root of it was... Well, it's a very humble question, let me say. Are yeah. we mm-hmm. are yes. we disobeying God? I, I'm so that grateful. Is, While we're trying to serve. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to serve. That's right. And we've and, received uh, a number of emails like this. Yeah, yeah true. So yeah. I'm so I'm so grateful for the heart and the impulse and the humility. But just answering the kind of the larger question. All right, so what what role should a woman play in the in the worship of the church yeah, or in yeah, leading yeah. music in the church? To, I think to answer that, you got to step back and ask other questions. And we actually talked about this on an earlier podcast about about what, yes. what worship is. But you, you have to ask. There are preliminary questions to be asked. So, what are we doing when we gather? Uh, what What are we doing when we gather to worship? Um, what is the person who's up front leading the singing doing? Mm, mm. Mm, okay, and then how does Scripture speak to such things? Does Scripture speak to such things? So in our, we'll just use Sovereign Grace as an example. In our setting in Sovereign Grace, a, a few things combine to answer that question for us, I think. So one is, and this is often, I think, neglected, in many different kinds of conversations, uh, but in, in ecclesiological consideration. Uh, mm-hmm. In other words, the doctrine of the church. What, what, is, the, what is the church gathering? What, what's mm-hmm. happening? And so when we gather, uh, as we've talked about, I think, in that other, in that other podcast, we gather— Not Sound Plus Doctrine. This was another podcast entirely. Or, or was no, it— No, this was Sound Plus Doctrine. Oh, oh the Word the of God first episode, Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Yes. Glad you it made such an impact. Oh, I was listening, Jeff. Did you, did you remember? Thank yes. you, Dave. I'm, Sorry. I'm, I'm grateful Sorry. for that. That's right. But we, we, we come to, you know, in the church, we the, the gathered church, we come together as the people of yes. God to worship God informed by the Word of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we spoke about in that last podcast about what worship fundamentally is. It is a response to God's, an appropriate response. Yes. Yep. A scripture-led response yeah. to God as he has revealed himself preeminently in Christ mm-hmm. and through the gospel. And so our gatherings are informed by that. They're to be shaped by that. They're not about us. They're not to, we, we're not gathering for an experience. We're not gathering to express ourselves. We're gathering to draw near to God, to be addressed by God, and then to respond appropriately to him. Mm-hmm. Although both of those things take place, we do experience things, we do express ourselves, but that is not the primary function, primary goal of our gathering. We have to see Christ. We have to see God. Well, in I would say those expression, th- those those experiences, uh, biblically, what they're meant to be are experiences of resp- responsive yes. experiences. Yes, yes. That's what expressions I mean. yeah. to to God's revelation yes. of Himself. So yes. yes, when we are joyful in our worship, well, we're not just worship leaders. Musicians, we're not just positioning people. Let's get joy in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get the right <laughs> sounds the drums. to get joy in them. No, we, we're we're beholding Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and by the work of the Holy Spirit, that's another podcast. What this? What is the yes, Spirit we'll doing? Get in you our on gathering? for that. No but, question. But through the Spirit's illuminating, strengthening work, we are seeing Christ more clearly. We're mm-hmm. apprehending the truth of the gospel more, more vividly. And and then what? What else do we do? We're 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 forgiven. We're reconciled with yes, God. We're the given the promise of God's of presence uh, and the promise that all that is happening in our lives is ultimately governed by Him and working for mm-hmm. our good. What else is there yep. but to respond in joy, right? So all worship then must be informed by, governed by the truth of God's Word. Because all, and so all worship is a, a revelation or a response to God's revelation. So when we, when we realize that, then you think, okay, well, what is the person leading the worship doing? Well, in our setting, because the, the, the substance of worship um, is, is the truth of God's word, 
uh, hence our lyrics, which are informed yes. with mm-hmm. truth. Yes. Uh, they are they, they are musical and lyrical and artistic expressions of the truth of God's word. Yes, and expressions of a biblical response to that truth. Right. So what what that means is that, that so the musical aspect is not something different than the rest of the meeting. Mm. Uh, mm. So in, in that gathering, the people leading the music are presenting in musical form the truth of God's word, mm. which mm. is meant to, which we're meant to receive and to confess. Yes. So as we sing, we're confessing the truth of God's word and to lay hold of and to believe. These are the kinds of things mm. that, that, that we mm. spoke about. Therefore, the person leading, and, and this is the way we would view it yeah, in, in a yeah. Song of Grace setting, they're leading us, not, they're not leading tunes. They're, they're ultimately leading us in, in apprehending the revelation of God and in responding mm. to the revelation of mm. God. So there's always, we, we, we would see this, yeah. right? There's a leadership component to our worship leaders, they are directing us. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's an some, authoritative. Yes, they're role. directing us. Function. Sometimes exhorting us. Sometimes yeah. teaching us with their comments in setting up yeah. a song, yeah. Yeah. Yes, or right. maybe pausing between songs and elucidating a truth yes. that was in that song. So there's a there's a teaching component. There, well, there's a leadership component first and foremost, and then often there's a teaching component. And I would even say. Too, there's a pastoral yes. component Strongly, to that as well. Yeah. Therefore, if if that's true of a particular setting, if that's true of what a worship leader, for lack of a better term, uh, for what a worship leader is doing in a particular setting, if that's how it's designed, and that's how that's how ours are configured. Yeah. Therefore, those are functions that Scripture speaks to, leading the gathered mm-hmm. people of God, mm-hmm. teaching mm-hmm. the gathered people of God. And therefore, those in and, and what Scripture would say, would that, that those would be functions that are reserved in Scripture f- in the gathered church for men. Yep. And, you know, the key text there is the one you just read, 1, 1 Timothy 2, 12, yeah. where Paul does, does not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over men. Yeah. And the context there is the, is the gathered church. Um. And that's not a cultural accommodation. Mm. That's not because mm. something bad was going on in Ephesus. Mm. Uh, the the reasoning for that comes later in that f- verses fourteen and fifteen. Paul yes. roots that in the created in the creation order. Yeah, God has established a creative order with with man. Uh, Created first, Adam man given first, then Adam, Eve. yes, and Adam given a headship role that is to express itself in the family, and then that is also to express itself in the church because the church is designed on the family, on the family right. structure. Yeah. Um, so that's why in Sovereign Grace we don't have women worship leaders. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the way we understand that role and the way that role actually functions, yes. it, it is leadership teaching functions yes. that we would see scripture is reserving for men. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now there could be another setting. Um, that's why I would never say, and you, you were alluding to this, I would never say uh, to to anyone that, I, that that I'm not familiar with the context. Like yeah, like yeah, the yeah. The 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 lady who who wrote yes. in I, and, you know. is what I'm doing wrong, and I would say, well, it really depends. At least from my perspective, it it depends on what you're doing. So you use the example of the the, the lady leading or playing the organ, who's basically a song leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if in that setting she's not, there's not a leadership function. There's not a uh, m- meaning leading in the word of God. Yeah. yeah now, yeah. if you're play, you know opening chord, you know you're lead, you're getting people <laughs> tuned to the song that's coming. <laughs> yes. I, I don't mean. I don't think that's what scripture means. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex- that word often is the is the verb. It means an exercise of authority over. Oh. Mm-hmm. So leading. You know, starting off a song with certain chords is not exercising authority. I know some They're, organist who would see it that way. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Hop two, uh, but I, I wouldn't see that as an exercise right. of authority right. over, yeah. over men that, yep. that, that that Paul that Paul would be speaking to. There. Yes. Um, so if if someone is more of a song 
leader and a musical yeah. leader, then I would say, well, you know, perhaps the way you're functioning in that role is absolutely right. I do think, now I don't want to speak for the kind lady who wrote, but I, I do think that what that reflect what her question reflects is is both not, not only a, a reverence for God's word yeah. and wanting to a desire to honor God, but also I think something in I would say because I th- I think biblical teaching we can obscure it we can suppress it but I think the biblical vision of manhood and womanhood in a redeemed heart finds an echo mm. Mm. and so I think when you and, and I've talked just, uh, expand finds upon an that. echo meaning there's a rightness to it okay and so I have and I have talked to to uh, ladies who are put in leadership roles or asked to yes, serve in leadership yes. roles, and they they find themselves uncomfortable. I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. So I think by putting yes, a, a woman in such a role like that, whether that be a particular kind of deacon, that, that's another yeah. that's another big question. But I think a deacon, uh, if, if there's a women deacon, some churches have women deacons, yep. some complementary churches do, yep. some complementarian churches do not. Um, if you do, I think you have to ensure, this is not what this podcast is about, but right, I think right. you have to ensure that- Wait, we're talking about deacons? That that person is not exercising authority over men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, um, so back, 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 back to the matter at hand. If a, if a woman is functioning in a, in a musical leadership yes, role and yes. not doing those things, then I, then I could see that as being yes. that, that being fine. What I would say, though, is that to make sure that doesn't happen and to protect her from that happening, the, the pastor, even though he that, may not yeah. be able to carry a note or play, yep. a, a, play a note on an instrument, it, it needs to be clear that he is leading the worship because pastors yes. are ultimately responsible for the worship. Yes. You don't delegate yeah, yes. that to a musician. We've said that before yep. as well. And so... Um, when it can put unnecessary burdens on other people that they're not needing to carry, like these ladies that yeah. are... Exactly. You know, yeah. when a pastor can step in and help and and, yeah. and do that leadership role. A pastor or even a, you know, a qualified man, maybe there's a, maybe there's a man in their church who can sing, uh, or he doesn't even have to sing. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he he can have a dead mic while he's singing, or or no mic at all if it's a small church. Um, <laughs> I wonder if they but, do that but, with me sometimes. But I, <laughs> but I think it would serve the, the, these ladies who are playing mm. to 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 signal to the church yes. that what is happening here is 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 a function of our worship. It's therefore an expression of the church's pastoral leadership. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and so I would want to protect them from false impressions as yes. well as from functioning in that way that uh, I, I think Scripture would not would not uh, call them to do. Well, especially in a culture, at least American culture, where there is so much pressure to break down any distinction mm-hmm. and, yeah. and even elevate things that are out of line with God's design and say, mm-hmm. no, this is good. This mm-hmm. is good. She she goes on, or she asks, what would you recommend our church does with no men able to musical lead? So, which I think you just covered. Um, the, the It doesn't have to be a pastor, doesn't, but it could be a, a capable, able man who is either there uh, offering things to say or even singing up front. I think we need to realize that leading congregational worship, worship song, is a pastoral function before it's a musical one, mm-hmm. which Absolutely. should free, you know, uh, certain guys from thinking, "Oh, I, I can't lead musically." Because no question, uh, I mean, I've seen churches where the the musical gifting is is squarely in the 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 women's camp. And uh, the guys are just not hacking it. And that's okay. That is totally fine. God still gives responsibility for leadership, for direction, for pastoring to the guys. And that's right. That's beautiful. It, it brings fruitfulness. And, and I wanna, would want to add, and I'd love to, if you have anything to add to this, Jeff or David, um, just we serve in churches where the women... I've I've been privileged to serve with women who are very gifted. Um, if you even hear there's a yeah. there's a college student she's graduated now, but uh, Anna who who's very gifted pianist, 
And when I'm gone, she's just, she's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, but she doesn't feel any burden to kind of lead and, yeah. you know, she's just, she's there to serve. Mm -hmm. So I think all the ways that women can serve would be things like, uh, obviously singing, playing an instrument, um, serving as a model of expressiveness, engagement, mm -hmm. um, to the congregation solos. So I'll distinguish between, um, when I'll ask a woman to start a song. So we'll, we'll sometimes start a song with a, a female vocalist, just her voice, just to just to hear that, just to have the congregation hear that, and then the congregation and the other members of the band join in after, with, mm -hmm. after that. But I won't say I want you to lead this. Uh, the, another guy would lead, or I would lead it. I'll be exhorting, I'll be encouraging, I'll be giving direction, those kinds of things, but I want her and, voice. And you will have led us... For fifteen Previously. minutes before, yes, before that exactly, song. exactly. Yeah. She's not coming out of the gate saying, "Hey, church, this whatever." Um, and then behind the scenes, uh, I've had women serve. Women have served in significant ways, you know, as musical directors, as choir directors, as mm -hmm. you know, where that's not an authoritative, you know, doctrinally theological kind of authority uh, exercise. It's it's musical. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And praise God, we, I thank God, you know, sometimes we, we will, it'll end up, I think a couple of times we've had like an all guys band. I just feel this is weird, <laughs> you know, because it's just not, it's not the well, church. Not typical for a lot Yeah, it's do, not yeah. the church. Yeah. Um, but I mean, do you have any, guys have any thoughts about that? Just ways women have served to mm. encourage and strengthen what we do mm -hmm. congregationally. Yeah, well, I, I think one way, I mean, all the ways you mentioned, but I think one way is every time before we meet, we pray with one another. Yes, yes. That's just a wonderful, like, picture of how we complement each other as we're praying for one another yeah. and bringing our requests before the Lord. I feel encouraged and blessed every time, even before we enter a stage, mm. Uh, interacting with that, but there yes. are multiple ways. Yeah, that yeah. we're blessed. And I, yes, absolutely. And what what you just said, I think it's a good exercise or an example in in exercising discernment. So, are these roles? So you're you're proactive in seeking roles for women that absolutely. are that are appropriate, and not just proactive. You. We want to benefit yep. from the gifts yep. uh, of these of these Absolutely. ladies in this case, um, which is which is wonderful. But it's you, it's just an exercise in discerning. Okay, is this placing them in a position where they are where, where they would be contradicting scripture, where they yeah. would be teaching or exercising authority over men? That's that's why it's so important. What we said at the beginning is we we just can't we we can't draw a distinction between our musical worship and then the rest of the service. Mm. Yes. You know, whether well we said. are, you know, in our call to worship where uh, scripture is read that is, is, is acknowledging and really embodying the fact that, you know, worship is not a self-generated response. Yes. Worship is not our idea. It's not our initiative. God is the one who takes initiative in our salvation and thus yes. in our worship. And so our worship, we, we are responding to God. God is the one who's initiated our relationship with him and the covenant we have with him, etc. So we are, we are responding to that. Um, in, in, in the sermon, we are, <laughs> that, is a, that is part of our worship. Uh, God's yes, word yes, is being amen. given to us. We are amen. hearing God's voice in His word, so that we can respond in belief and in uh, and in con you know, repentance, or yes. in in faith, or in, in comfort, joy, yeah. Yeah. joy yeah, 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 all, all yeah, those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. The, the benediction, where we speak God's word over the congregation, and then we, mm -hmm. we're leaving in faith, you know, laying hold of those promises of God. Well, in the music, we are singing words uh, that, that derive from God's truth, from, from Scripture, and then we, we are confessing that truth and yeah. responding mm -hmm. to that truth with joy and make a joyful noise. To, to the Lord, yes. you know, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. Yeah, that's just wonderful. God is, he's revealed himself yes. as the Lord, our maker. So what do we do? We respond in 
worship and yes. in kneeling and in reverence and in joy, mm. you know, all those kinds of things. So again, the music is just, it's a piece of what we're doing the entire meeting, mm. yes. which is being addressed by God through his truth and what he's done, especially in Christ, and then responding as his people. So I think if you keep that straight, then you're, then you're positioned to exercise discernment. Okay, so what's appropriate in this part of the meeting for a man mm. to do yep. or a woman yep. to do, et cetera. It's easier. So, yeah. so how would you mm. respond to someone who says, yeah, but what about women writing worship songs that we're all singing? Mm-hmm. Is that is the Bible, is that the Bible, is that a woman teaching the church? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't view it that way at all. Yeah, how come? Um, I, mean, I don't either, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I... I'd rather hear your response than mine. Sure, it's... Uh, a, a w- well, there, there's, a, I think, a few components of that. First of all, um, the way in which we, we don't, we do sing the truth of, when we're singing, uh, you know, scripturally rich songs, we are singing the truth of God's word, but it's a form that, in a sense, is impersonal. I'm not looking at the bottom of uh, that. Okay, who uh, wrote that? Uh oh, I can't sing this song. It was a woman. No, we don't do. We don't. Yeah. We don't engage with <laughs> songs that way. Yeah. They are artistic uh, compositions that yeah. employ the truth of God's word, yeah. and that which enable us to understand God's word, to confess God's mm. word, to. So mm. I, I just don't. We don't interact. That's great. We don't interact with yeah. that form in that way. Yes. That's completely different than a person standing up, opening up God's Word, and expounding God's Word, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and speaking authoritatively. No no author is speaking authoritatively. There are songs, we've yeah. joked about this, but you know, there are songs, then I, I sing a line, and it's kind of like, ah, that's a ridiculous line. Uh, I really, I, I don't <laughs> believe that, that line. Not I don't believe that line. In other words, that's not how I, that's not what happened to me yes. when I was saved. Yes. You know, I wasn't just kind of, oh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll choose God. No, I was I was dead, and God yeah, yes. brought me to life and yes. caused me to love Him. You know, yeah, that's a good so, point. Though. So I'm not receiving these songs the way I would receive a teaching. Yes, yes. yep. So I think that the art, the mm-hmm. the I want to say the art form, but you know the the form of that song is not the teaching of a person, even though a woman has used her gifts or poetic yes, gifts, yes. and even a doctrinal understanding. Yep. Scripture didn't say that. Uh, in fact, that that very text that uh, that you mentioned, uh, maybe it was in another podcast. But we were talking about one Timothy two, and it talked about women learning. Yeah, that that's actually kind of a, a countercultural statement. Mm. Women mm-hmm. are being invited into a learning community yes. instead yes. of being mm. on the sidelines and not able yeah. to learn. Just as Mary sat before Jesus yep. uh, mm. and listened to him and was in the posture of a disciple, yes. etc. So. Uh, for for a woman to understand God's word and to be able to shape songs with God's word, I think that's a, that's a wonderful gift. It's not an exercise of authority. Yes. Um, and if you that is so good. And if you uh, thought about this, um, you know, in Colossians three it says we are teaching and admonishing one another. Well, Paul's not contradicting himself. The word of God's not contradicting mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. If we can teach and admonish one another as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, then Paul says. You know, I, I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. Well, obviously, those aren't the same kinds of teaching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a- and and we would encourage, and I hope that you feel encouraged. If you're a woman and you have a gift for writing congregational songs or want to develop that gift, please do. Please do. Mm-hmm. Please do. We have yeah. benefited from uh, many songs written by women, and hope to continue to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Jeff, thank you for helping us with this. Just a bottom line to, to wrap around. Come around to to the woman who's leading uh, in that church. Thank you for faithfully serving there. Mm. Yeah, and if you absolutely. find yourself in that position, you know maybe have them listen to this podcast. Maybe have your pastor listen to this podcast. <laughs> um, but but do all you can to encourage you know your leaders um, to uh, to lead and exercise authority and to teach and to to lead the church and be happy to serve musically because yeah. there are certainly situations yeah. you know. Small church, church plants, other countries, mission, you know, missionary plants, where you just don't have the musical resources that you'd have in another church. And 
you're being faithful and yeah. seeking to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. And God sees that and he honors that. And we are grateful for the women and mm, men who absolutely. joyfully serve their churches every week, leading the church and singing songs that enable the word of Christ to dwell in them That's right. richly. And in just one other thing I would say to that, not only encourage your leaders to do that, just ask. Yes, yes. Yeah. If, if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm in that situation, yeah. what I would be saying is, Pastor... We need your leadership. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, you're the you're the one responsible for this. Yes. You're our pastor. Yeah. You're our shepherd. You're the one responsible mm -hmm. for leading us in the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. uh, you're choosing the songs, or or you're approving the songs that we've sung. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Um, I really would ask that you would be a, a presence yes. in in this. You don't have to yeah. leave. Yeah. Um, maybe you're getting up every second song or whatever that looks yeah. like. But I, I think a humble request. For that's that great. kind of leadership. If I'm a pastor, I'm going to be grateful for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So. Amen. Great. Jeff, thank you so much for joining, on, uh, joining yes, us for this topic. You, we sure. plan to have you on the podcast for many other topics. <laughs> we <laughs> seem to bring, elevate the discussion. <laughs> Actually, anytime we have someone else, it tends, tends to elevate the discussion. Yeah, and we get really smart people on here. <laughs> so, so, anyway, thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. Sovereign Grace Music exists to produce Christ-exalting songs and training for local churches from local churches. For more information, free sheet music, translations, and training resources, you can visit us at SovereignGraceMusic.org.